The book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 18, tells us, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number, 666. Biblical scholars, who rarely agree on anything, do agree on the interpretation of this infamous number, 666, as an unmistakable reference to the Antichrist, Satan, or the beast. But why, as the Bible suggests, does it take understanding to count a series of three identical numbers? Simply reading the numbers, 666, requires no wisdom. Therefore, 666 must be a kind of code, hidden from us, yet somehow demanding to be discovered. One of the goals of this presentation is to reveal, through a greater understanding of God's Word, one example, one worldwide example, of the way the number 666, and all that this number implies, has found its way into our daily lives. Let's begin by examining the language of this passage more closely. As we know, the language of the Bible contains multiple layers of meaning. The word count, as it's used here, implies much more than simple arithmetic. For if the number 666 is a code, then it must be studied and deciphered, or if you will, counted by those of us who have or seek understanding. From the word counting, we can infer multiple thinking processes. Recognition and identification, as in picking out similar items within a group. Enumerating, assigning a number and value to these items. And yes, simple arithmetic, adding the numbers to produce a result. So it's through counting, a deciphering process, that we are shown a path to greater understanding and the revelation of truth. Before going any further, let's be clear on one central point. We do not mean to suggest that the Universal Product Code, or UPC, is the mark of Satan, the mark of the beast. But through a process, we will present factual evidence that the groundwork for an Antichrist monetary system is being laid today, and that the number 666 is one example of Revelation's prophecy coming true around the world and within your own home. Before we focus on the UPC issue, a little background study is called for, specifically on the subject of the mark of the beast, revealed in chapter 13 of Revelations. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Who is this second beast? Here Revelations refers to the false prophet, Satan's forerunner, endowed with power by Satan to perform horrific acts. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in sight of the first beast. Deception. Miracles. The false prophet works with smoke and mirrors to create illusions that mask the truth. Look back to chapter 2 of Thessalonians. And the Antichrist deceives the whole world by Satan's power, signs, and lying wonders. We are shown a prophetic vision of the Antichrist in all his glory. A world of the future where Satan appears to be unstoppable. His very image depicted on TV, in magazines, newspapers, in public places, in your own homes. An image that speaks demanding by his law that you bow and worship his image. The Antichrist of the future setting a stage today for those who would be deceived. The mark, the name, the number on your right hand or forehead. A chilling prophecy, especially frightening to those who would choose to live in the darkness of ignorance. Recall Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 when God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
Is Revelation's prophecy coming true today? The evidence seems to suggest it. In the final days of this world order, is there any doubt that our buying and selling system will be conducted with a mark, with credit transactions rather than cash? Is it this path that leads to destruction? Revelation chapter 14 provides one answer. If any man or woman worships the beast and his image and receives his mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, those who do so shall be damned for eternity. The day of a cashless society is fast approaching. Envision a world where cash transactions are virtually obsolete, where workers receive credits in place of dollars. If your job now pays you $5.35 an hour, that would translate to 5.35 hundredths of a credit an hour. A direct deposit system becomes mandatory for all payroll checks. Debit cards will replace credit cards. The very latest debit cards actually have a microcomputer chip built into them. Buying and selling transactions are done instantly. At the time of the transaction, when the card is scanned, the buyer's account is debited and the seller's account credited immediately. Can you see a connection between a debit card and the mark? Universal acceptance of the UPC is just one small example of our rapidly changing world economy. There is now new evidence to suggest that a marking system is being tested in new and different ways. In certain communities worldwide, there are eyewitness accounts of the mark seen on the hand and forehead being used today to transact business. For the purposes of this study, we will focus on the number 666 and its use in the Universal Product Code. Remember. The first step in counting the number 666 in the Universal Product Code is recognition and identification. In this design, which is used on 95% of all store products, breaking the code requires counting four sets of numbers. Our example here is an actual UPC taken from a grocery store package. Set number one represents the beginning, middle, and ending bar sets. Notice that, unlike the other bar sets, no numeral appears underneath them. There is a reason for this that we'll get to soon. The second set of numbers can be thought of as a category number. It tells the computer where the item is located in the computer banks, so it can process the item scanned. The number is found in the next set of bars, toward the middle, on either side. Remember. This is a separate number unto itself. The third set represents the manufacturer's identification number. All products under a given company's name will carry the same number in the set number three position. Once the manufacturer's ID is tabulated, the scanner looks to the right side of the code for the fourth set of numbers. This is the item number. Once the computer scans this number, it has recorded everything about the item and its history, including its price. The scan is complete and, in a matter of microseconds, the transaction made. We have broken the UPC down into its component parts, the first step in the counting process. Now we can examine how these parts are translated into single-digit numerals. Each UPC code uses two bar sets. Set number one translates into the numbers 0 through 9 and is used only on the left side of the UPC code. Look at the small 0 beside the two number 1s. Now look at the two bars above the 0. This bar set represents the number 0. Now look at the five bold numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 0 then at bar set number one. Examine how each of the numerals corresponds to a given bar set. Set number two. A distinctly different set of bar designs also translates into the numbers zero through nine, 
but is used only on the right side of the UPC design. Look at the numbers 80101 and follow the lines drawn from the numbers in bar set number 2 to the UPC below. Remember, UPC scanners first look for a string of numbers before the scan can begin. We are seeing four sets of numbers, but the first set is always the same number. It never changes. It's always there. That number is 666. This UPC design with five bold numbers on either side appears on 95% of all supermarket products. Other designs are also used, some with hyphens between numbers, but 666 appears on all of them. Look at the UPC codes on the products you have at home. You will quickly see that the number 6, derived from the second bar set, is used at the beginning, middle, and end of your sample UPC. Are all barcodes UPCs? Not necessarily. Inventory control codes, for example, do not use 666. And the reason is simple. Inventory control does not directly involve buying and selling. Remember, looks can be deceiving. You can use this decoding process on virtually any product sold today. Learn to count the number 666 and teach the method to your friends. Then inform as many people as you can. Family, friends, even your skeptical next door neighbor. Help them increase their awareness of the Antichrist system. Help them protect themselves from deception. Chapter 4, verse 6 of Hosea sums it up best. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee.